Each line represents a specific quality of your life. So the heart line indicates someone's emotional capability. If you've got a double line, that you've got a soulmate or a twin flame close by, and a curved headline means that you are an artist. To say that I have been beyond excited to create this video for you guys is a complete understatement. I know you're going to love learning about palmistry and hand reading. Hello, all my beautiful little unicorns, and welcome back to my channel. If this is indeed the first time that you're on my channel, my name is Vanessa Semina, and I would like to welcome you into the fam. Did you guys know that your palms and your hands are 100% unique, just like you? There are no two hands or palms that look the same. Look at your palms right now and just notice the lines on them, the texture, the size of your hands. Reading your hand is truly like reading reading a book. It says so much about your natural talents, your uniqueness, your strengths, your health, as well as your emotions. This is really like your personal story, and I can't wait to teach you everything that I know about palmistry so you can not only get to know yourself better. Hello, my beautiful angels. This is me a few days later. I am just editing this video, putting it together, and I am mortified. Come to find out I had something stuck to my chin for probably the first five to 10 minutes of the video. I'm not sure if it's powder or tissue paper. I apologize for that. I hope that you can still focus on the main purpose and content of this video, which isn't about me, but about palmistry and your hands and what they mean. Please go easy on me, you guys. I was just so focused on the content that I wasn't paying much attention to what I looked like. So let's just agree to pretend like this never happened and let's slide right back into figuring out what your palms say about you. But a little bit of knowledge in palm palmistry is good to have as it will help support you and encourage you to make the best decisions for yourself moving forward. And I want to make this really accessible. We'll get right into it with a little bit of history about palmistry because the science and practice of hand reading is one of the earliest forms of psychology known to humankind. And it dates back for so many thousands of years as it helped people understand the knowledge of themselves. So we can definitely say that palmistry is a science and it's a universal language and it's always been part of being human. Actually, my earliest memory of palmistry, I remember in Switzerland in the schoolyard, some kid coming up to me, flipping my hand over and just giving me a look like I was doomed. You think that that would have scared me away from this topic for good, but you know, here I am explaining basic palmistry to you. But in all honesty, palmistry is not that type of thing. There are so many details that go into reading your hand so don't worry about that type of thing because palmistry is just like a universal language no matter what background or what culture that you come from this is a basic language upon which we can all connect with one another and I think it's safe to say that all our ancestors were most likely fascinated with palmistry at some point in time so let's talk about the history of palm reading shall we and by the way nothing is ever written in stone with palmistry because your hands and your palms are actually capable of changing as well. So behold my beautiful unicorn family, a little overview of the history of palmistry. Since the beginning of time, people have always contemplated their hands and evidence suggests that basically all ancient civilizations used palmistry as a serious art form. References to palmistry appear in texts that were written in India more than 4,000 years ago. And a science of palm reading for use in medicine and healing emerged in China at approximately the same time as Indian palmistry. Chinese medical texts were some of the very first to mention the importance of the lines on one's hands and even use the lines in order to diagnose its patients. So it was taken very seriously back in time. And the Chinese were also the first to use fingerprints as a form of identity identification. Some ancient scriptures instruct monks not to read hands for money, which lets us know that palmistry was already a profession in 2000 BCE. A thousand years before fingerprints were used in the West, Chinese emperors used their thumbprints to sign and seal documents. 
Arabic palmistry and its references in Middle Eastern scriptures also greatly influenced palm reading in Europe. Before I guide you into the next step of the video where we're going to learn the most basic information about the lines on our hands and what they mean, I want to give thanks to some of my references as well as pioneers in palm reading. The art and science of hand reading classical methods for self-discovery through palmistry by Ellen Gold Berg and Dorian Bergen. If you are serious about palm reading, then this is going to be like a sacred scripture to you. Palmistry, Your Personal Guide by Roberta Vernon is a bit of a more lighthearted read. And as a pocket-sized reference, we've got a little bit of palmistry by Cassandra Eason. You can find the names of these amazing authors who helped shape my understanding of hand reading below in the description box, but now I want to get into the basics of palm reading. We're gonna be talking about mounts and lines, but what we're really going to focus on are the four main lines on your hand today. We'll be talking about your heart line, your headline, your lifeline, as well as your line of fate in great detail. I will explain to you what all of these lines mean, how you can find them, and also how you can interpret them on yourself as well as those around you. But I'll start off giving you a basic explanation of where you can derive information from. So most of the information that you can derive about another person or yourself comes from the mounts and the lines on your hands. Now you may ask yourself what that means, don't worry, I'm explaining everything in great detail. I want this to be easy to understand and super accessible and fun for you. So the mounts are the fleshy bits on your hand. I will also put a little depiction in here for you to better understand what the mounts are. Their fullness and their height vary from hand to hand, and the stronger the mount, the stronger the character trait. Each mount represents an archetype, and there are seven in total. Luna, upper mark. Mars, Mercury, Apollo, Saturn, Jupiter, Lower Mars, and Venus. So those are the mounts of your hands, but what we're going to be discussing in great detail right now are the lines. The lines are very important and said to be the only aspect on your hands that help not only predict your future, but also give you a sound understanding of where you came from, where you currently are in this moment, and how to best move forward. So think of the lines on your hands almost like little streams of energy, like little rivers of energy. I love how that is described in the art and science of hand reading book. And each line represents a specific quality of your life. So that could be, for example, intelligence, it could be your emotional state, it could be your strength, it could be your adaptability. We'll get into all of that in detail in just a second, but Bear in mind here that, as mentioned, the lines can almost be looked at as rivers. So the clearer the line and the less disruptions, the easier it is for water and energy to flow. So while we're exploring the major lines, keep this in mind that your lines are like little currents of energy. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video right now and you find it insightful, don't forget to leave a little unicorn emoji in the comment section. That way you can let me and others know that you're here and you're having a good time. And furthermore, I would really appreciate if you could give this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel, as I can see based on the thumbs up, as well as subscriptions from this video, whether you enjoyed it. And that's a great indication as to whether I should make more videos on this topic, on other lines on your hand, the mounts in detail, etc. So let's start out with your heart line, shall we? First, I'm going to explain to you how you can locate your heart line. The heart Heart line is just one of those lines that most of us possess and it's going to be fairly easy for you to find the heart line as it is the highest line on your hand. It begins around the mount of mercury at the percussion side of the palm below the little finger above the mount of luna. And this side of your hand is known as the percussion side. While your heart line can offer some information about your love life, 
it is actually also really helpful to figure out how you're doing emotionally and how you're doing with your health. So it's not necessarily just a line that concerns romantic love or relationships. It gives you insight and information about so much more. And I just quickly want to point out that your age, your cultural background, your economic standpoint, or even your sensual preferences do not matter or make a difference when you're palm reading. We're all the same because after all, love is expressed and felt in the same way whether you choose to love someone who identifies as a unicorn or as any other beautiful living being. Also, you can always use a magnifying glass to look at your lines in greater detail. And right now you may be sitting there asking yourself, well, Vanessa, should I read my right hand or my left hand? It's very simple. You should take into consideration both hands. And right now, you may be staring at your hands and actually be kind of bewildered and shocked at how vastly different that the lines on each individual hand can be. And maybe you never paid that close of attention and you're just noticing now and having this big epiphany and this big eye-opening moment. So I'm gonna go through this video very slowly because I definitely want you to enjoy and savor this moment. So the hand that you use use on a daily basis that is your writing hand is known as your active hand and your active hand is usually the hand that speaks of what's going on right now and it is usually a little different than your inactive hand so if you're right-handed then your active hand is your right hand and that would make your left hand your inactive hand right and it's the complete opposite if you are left-handed so your inactive hand also known as your recessive hand so the less used one is the one that describes the qualities that were given to you at birth. Whereas your dominant hand, your more active hand is the one that tends to change throughout the course of your life. This is the hand that offers more up-to-date information, but let's continue on about our heart lines, shall we? So take a close look and examine your heart line. It most commonly ends either close to the base of the first two fingers or most commonly even between them. It's the highest line to cross the palm below the fingers. So it's very easy to spot and most of us do possess a heart line that is prominent enough for us to examine. So let's get into doing just that. So the heart line indicates the physical state of the heart as well as someone's emotional capability. And when you have a heart line that is really deep and strong, that means that you too are capable of a lot of resilience and that your heart is in a healthy condition. That is what is said about a deep and clear heart line. Also, if your heart line is deep and clear, you are said to be very steady in your emotions, reliable, as well as devoted. Don't worry, I have interpretations for lots of different shapes and forms of heart lines and if you already feel like you can identify with a solid clear heart line you may still notice other things just give me a moment to get into a little bit more detail about characteristics and you'll find that you can read a lot more into these lines than meets the eye so i hope you're ready and you're analyzing your heart line with me so if there are no disturbances like breaks, dots, etc., then your channel is clear and right now energy is flowing really freely for you. So while the heart line is about the way a person loves, either in a romantic sense or in a platonic sense, as already mentioned, it can also be a very helpful indication as to where your physical health lies. And one thing that's important for you to to note is that a clear heart line shows that the energy is flowing really freely. If your heart line is more on the thin and delicate side, this is often an indication that you too are a delicate and sensitive soul and that the boundaries that you have need to be respected by yourself and also by other people. 
So a thin and yet clear line means that you currently can't carry too much emotionally and if all of the lines on your hands are thin and delicate in proportion to your hand, then this means that overall you need to take good care of your personal needs and ensure that you don't burn out as well as that you don't overextend yourself and try to people please too much moving forward. A broad and shallow heart line, which is wider than you would expect, kind of means that you're not using your emotional energy as effectively as you could. And again, if it's just broad and shallow, that means that it doesn't take much in order for excitement to topple over into anxiety. And it also can be an indication as to whether you can get attached to people very easily or whether you kind of have walls built up. So whether you're reading your own hand right now or some Someone else's hand keep in mind like a wide shallow line indicates that someone is emotionally maybe not quite ready for a very serious relationship let's talk about broken and uneven lines this isn't unusual as it indicates changing conditions in the areas of life affected by the heart line. So when your heart line is broken, this shows the different conditions that you're going through in life and can be an indication as to when there will be a break in a relationship or you will just have a huge revamp of your love life and your relationships in general. And breaks in the heart line often mean that during this time of your life, you will have to work extra hard in order to overcome challenges. And I hope that you all can appreciate my honesty. It's important for me to make it very clear that there are challenging aspects, but also aspects that are easy to deal with. And I think the most important thing is to just be honest about those challenges. And if I inform you about these challenges and you see them within your palms and you actually think to yourself, huh, I am kind of going through a difficult phase here in the first third of the line, which indicates like the first third of my life. And you may use this as a great indication of the fact that maybe you just have to put a little bit of extra effort in to overcome a difficult time in your life. But it can also give you hope that things moving forward are going to be a little easier for you to deal with. And furthermore, deep, clear parts of the lines indicate that life is going smoothly and your ventures will be successful. Broken bits indicate that extra effort is needed in order for ventures to be successful. Let's talk about chained lines. And I feel like I have quite a few lines that have some chained bits. And this is actually one of the most challenging parts of your energy to flow through, right? Because it's chained and your energy is being tossed in all types of directions. If we look at your lines as almost like a current of energy, and sometimes an entire line can be chained or it may be just a portion of the line. And a chained heart line means that you tend to be very sentimental and an overthinker. You're also worried about love and the future and your most important relationships within your life. And that is what creates these chains because your mind is working on overdrive. But I guess if you're a water or an air sign, that kind of goes without say. So let's talk about the length of your heart line if you have a long heart line then this shows a strong ability to empathize with other people show affection as well as expressing love however if your heart line is on the shorter end of the spectrum then it may be hard for you to open up to other people and you may right now be a little bit more involved with yourself and the things that you're going through a straight line means that a person is very careful when it comes to to trust as well as openness and romantic love and a straight line also indicates that you tend to pick love not only with your heart but also with logic so picking someone maybe based on their looks if you're looking to start a family picking someone based on the type of job or field of work that they're in picking someone based on good education or a healthy bank account i mean the list is endless just having preferences and making those very important 
is predominantly what people with a straight line do. If your heart line is actually a line that is curved, then that shows that you're very much rooted in being more emotional, letting your heart lead you, and you're a little bit more changeable than someone who has a straight heart line. Furthermore, a curved line is most often associated with people who identify as empaths and also people who love animals or children and are very close to their family or wish to be super close to their family and their loved ones. So basically having a curved heart line indicates that you will always follow your heart no matter what anyone may say. You are very romantic and capable of falling deeply in love. So now let's talk about your headline. Let me first get into how you can find your headline. For most of us, our headline is right beneath our heart line. Not all of us have a clear headline and that's okay. Don't worry, I describe all of the different characteristics. But first, let me tell you exactly where it's located. So the headline starts on the side of your thumb and travels more or less across your hand. The beginning and the end of this line can vary greatly and your headline helps you understand your potential to earn money, what's gonna happen within your career, and to a certain extent, also what your hobbies and interests are. For those whose life and headlines are tied, this means is that you think before you act and you are a pretty independent person. And also the greater the gap between your head and your heart line, so if there is a gap between your head and your heart line, the larger that gap is, the more outspoken you are said to be. But coming back to your head and your heart line potentially overlapping or being tied, this means that you're someone who finds family very important and who may have had a really close bond to their family at the time of them overlapping. If your head and your heart line are overlapping more at the beginning of the lines, then you know that this indicates that there was a very strong bond at the start of your life and that you are very heavily influenced by your parents, which could be a good thing, but it can also definitely haunt you if you left home early and you found that your parents' words and treatment is still kind of echoing in your mind as an adult when your head and your heart line overlap. This shows that there is some sort of connection and bond there that is stronger than the average person experiences. If you have a completely free headline that isn't attached to any of the other lines really, then you are said to be someone who is very optimistic. You're said to be someone who is courageous enough to pave their own way. And that points to having very supportive family and friends in your life. A headline that begins below the lifeline means that you have more of like an introverted tendency and you have shyness from childhood. And having hidden insecurities and maybe even absent parents or even one of your parents having been absent for a portion of your life may be another reason why your headline begins below your lifeline. Long and well-formed headlines means that you are justice loving and that you're someone who is rooted in reality and to a certain extent you can also be kind of idealistic. If the area between your head and your lifeline is webbed and looks kind of muddled with small lines, then that often shows that you were not a big fan of school or you maybe even hated school and decided to at some point drop out or just begrudgingly get through it. And if you have a wavy headline, then this points towards a lot of indecisiveness and changeability. A very deep line, and by deep I mean it doesn't matter whether your line is straight or curved, this means that you have the ability to focus and that you're more likely to memorize important things because of that capability of focusing on a thing at a time. And I also read that there is an age-old saying that says that a straight headline indicates that someone is a mathematician and a curved headline means that you are an artist. A straight and short headline points to someone who is practical, who wants to 
also get straight to the point, but could maybe benefit from speaking about their emotions a little more freely and sharing with others what they're going through. And a long and gently downward sloped headline means that you're the type of person who is very open-minded, you have a lot of hobbies, and you're open to learning. But now if you have any upturned branches on your headline, which some of you may have, that usually indicates that you are skilled at making money as well as attracting it, and you're potentially also a good gambler. And a headline that is really long means that you never stop learning and that you will remain a student and a curious person for life. A very long headline may also mean that you have this inclination to be a bit of a perfectionist throughout your lifespan. And any breaks in your headline mean that you have to quit procrastination and maybe even take a lot of time to reset so if you're procrastinating a lot and you notice like hey my headline is kind of broken then that means that you need some serious time out to recuperate to regain your strength your energy and your vitality so you can tackle those tasks that are making you procrastinate in a way that you finally get to them and you're not just worried about them or intimidated by them. So make sure that you then take enough time for yourself to also figure out why procrastination is even a thing for you because if there are any islands in your headline then that shows difficulty with procrastination or some sort of big setbacks in your life also these are all very common things so if you have islands or breaks in your headline don't panic you are among many others who are experiencing this and are just looking at their headline and realizing hey i have a deep strong headline to some extent but maybe I have some breaks, maybe I have an upward turn line. This is a very, very individual thing. Also keep in mind that any forks in your headline that are going in different directions indicate that you are talented in different areas of your life and that you have lots of different interests and hobbies, maybe music, drawing, poetry, and you kind of have to split some time between work and the things that are just passion projects and you truly love. Forks in your headline are also super common amongst people who have multiple jobs and will have multiple jobs for most of their life. This could be out of necessity, but it could also be because you love to really put a lot of work and effort into stuff that you're passionate about, sometimes even more than in your regular day job. But now let's talk about your lifeline next. So once again, I'll show you exactly how you can locate your lifeline so we can then get into the interpretations and meanings of your lifelines. So your lifeline runs in a curve from above your thumb or between the thumb and the forefinger to below the thumb, ending on or near your wrist. And your lifeline is all about your health and the main patterns in your life, as well as your resilience. It can be shorter or it can go all the way towards your so-called bracelets and it can break and split in places. Don't worry about this. While a long, strong line does indicate a healthy, long life, a shorter line doesn't necessarily mean a shorter life. We're going to get into all of those meanings, so don't freak out, don't worry about it. Just hear me out about all of the different characteristics of your lifeline. So if your lifeline is clear at the start of your line, it suggests that you've had certain childhood privileges and also comforts. And a messy line at the beginning of the lifeline suggests that you had a difficult start to life, more of like a messy childhood, if you will. And if your lifeline starts high up on your hand, close to Jupiter finger, you are said to be a pretty cool laid back person who is still logical at the same time. And you're very driven to fulfill your ambitions and you'll stop at nothing to make your dreams become a reality. And if your lifeline begins lower down or maybe even close to the thumb, this is an indication that you are on the practical side, you're very sociable and also very connected to your own emotions. Deep and unbroken lifelines mean that life will go smoothly, but 
it may also not always be super exciting when you have very deep unbroken lines. This may point to a more mundane existence, so to say, whereas if you have chained lines, this indicates that you have a lot of different options as to where you can take your life, a lot of different opportunities and decisions that you can make along your path of life and is obviously a little bit more exciting but can come with a little bit more challenging situations and difficulties. If your lifeline intersects with your headline at the start or at any point in the middle, you see your head and your lifeline overlapping. This means that you have very strong family ties and as a result, people with a tied lifeline are either the types who live at home for a very long time or are still very emotionally connected to their family even after moving out and will stay in close contact with their loved ones and kind of crave that intimacy on an ongoing basis. Now let's talk about the breaks in the lifeline because I'm sure a lot of you are worried about that, but there's nothing to worry about. Breaks are very normal and breaks in your lifeline actually suggest some big epiphanies and moments of enlightenment for you. And this will change the outlook that you have about your entire existence, but also your priorities. So any breaks in your lifeline actually point to you redefining what's important to you in life and maybe switching from having one aspect of life, be it monetary, as like the focal point to all of a sudden having priorities with building your own family or focusing on actually living life. If you've got a double line, this means that you've got a soulmate or a twin flame that will be close by throughout your path during your life and any line that is like frayed or split a fork in any part of your lifeline but especially at the end of your lifeline can indicate that you'll spend some amounts of time working but also a lot of time with family as you're splitting time between two very demanding areas of your life. And lastly, let's talk about the scariest part of the lifeline. If the end of your lifeline is kind of frayed or has a bit of a fork, this may be an indication that towards the end of your life, there may be some years of battling with steadily declining energy levels because your river of energy is fraying, right? And your energy is going in all sorts of directions. It could, of course, also mean that you're battling with slowly declining health, which is normal for a large portion of the population as they get older. So don't freak out about this. And if you're fortunate to have your lifeline be really clear all the way down to your bracelets, or should I just say to your wrist, then this is an indication that you will have a very strong health till the end of your lifetime. So now let's talk about the line of fate, also known as the Saturn line or the line of security. So where does this line get its name from? So the Saturn line gets its name from its location on the hand because the Saturn line or line of fate, whichever you'd like to call it, is actually a line that starts near the wrist and leads up towards the Saturn finger. So the Saturn line gets its name from being placed right down the Saturn finger, which is your middle finger. So look at your hand and take some time to see if you can locate it because one thing about the line of fate is that not everybody has a line of fate, especially a pronounced one, but maybe you just also have to look very carefully which is why I mentioned that you may use a magnifying glass if that helps you. But it all has meaning whether you have a line of fate or not at this moment in time, and none of it is just solely good or bad. So don't freak out if you don't have a line of fate. I don't have a very pronounced one either. I struggle to even identify as someone who has one, period. But we'll now still talk about the line of fate and what it means, whether you have one or not. So the line of fate determines how comfortable or secure that you feel throughout your path in life and an unbroken Saturn line or line of faith, whichever you'd like to call it, 
that is actually really really rare and shifts as well as chains suggest new cycles in life as well as changes overall so if you have a very broken saturn line then this just shows that you're going through a lot of growth and a lot of different cycles of rebirths and renewals. A missing or a very faint line of faith is actually an indication of the fact that you are unbothered by other people's opinions and you live life for yourself. That's the most important thing to you. And furthermore, you aren't solely preoccupied with making money or fitting in or climbing the social ladder. You just want an easy and soft life. And often missing lines of faith have been associated with people who are quote unquote self-made entrepreneurs and people who aren't afraid to strike out and do their own thing. So if you don't have a line of fate, that is potentially your fate. And now let's talk about lines that enter the line of fate. So if you have any lines that are sort of like entering or intersecting with your Saturn line or your line of fate, they all have different meanings because lines that enter the fate line show important people entering your life and a forked line of fate means that there are two paths and two destinies that you can choose from and you're being called to choose wisely. Furthermore, a deep and prominent line of fate means that you will feel really secure throughout your existence on this planet and it shows strong ties to your personal destiny and that that will determine a lot of the offerings that life has for you. So if you came to this earth with a specific plan, plan and destiny, a deep and pronounced line of fate could be an indication that you have to follow that path. And if your line of fate disappears in different places, don't panic. I have an interpretation for you too. A disappearing line of fate actually means that you have a bit of a tendency to overthink what people say to you and say about you. And you can also tend to get discouraged in situations. But once you kind of notice that and you become very aware of these tendencies, you can often improve them for the better very rapidly and instinctually. If your line of fate is placed away from your lifeline, then you are said to be very independent and mature as an individual and very much a self-sustaining human being. It is also an indication that you have been independent from a very young age and that you've been unafraid to make decisions for yourself. If your line of fate joins in with your lifeline, you may do a lot for other people from a place of guilt or obligation so it's important for you to notice that and be honest with yourself about people pleasing tendencies and furthermore if your saturn line ends at your headline you are said to be set in your career towards your middle age and if your line of fate or your saturn line ends right by your heart line then this means that you may give up on some money goals in life in order to pursue spending more time with family or adding even starting your own family and that life quality is what is most important to you not money or material items so if your saturn line ends on your heart line then fulfillment is more important to you than any types of luxuries that was a lot you guys but i really hope that you learned a lot about these four basic lines on your hands let me know below what you learned about yourself what hit home and if you thought that this sort of video was fun furthermore remember that nothing is fixed okay the lines on your hands are changeable and that using palmistry is a great way to go alongside counseling other types of divination methods and self-development so this is meant to be really fun and allow you to explore more about who you are palmistry is also just here to potentially help you avoid obstacles so you can just take the straight route towards your dreams and that was the entire goal of me creating this video so i really hope that you liked it and that you found it enjoyable feel free to let me know below 
below. I'd love to hear from you guys. This is my first piece of content on palmistry, but if you really enjoyed it, then I will of course be making more for you so you can learn all about yourself as well as the people around you. So thank you so much, my beautiful unicorn family, for being here and for spending this magical time and space with me. I'm sending you so much love and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming videos.